So, Dr. Rudy, what can a young person do to prevent uh, the exposure to EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals? What can one do? Yeah, so, so to me, again, this is something I'm passionate about. The first thing, we need more awareness. I've been in the testosterone replacement world. I've been in the wellness world for about 15 years now. I'm only just figuring out how toxic our world is. So where we tend to get more exposure to this is, number one, personal care products. We get a lot of those. So I encourage any young person, men or women, and even women who want to get pregnant, um, they have to realize everything they, they, they breathe, they eat, or they put on their skin can get transferred to their fetus. And you have to think about EDCs. So, for example, number one, sunblock. I want everybody, when you're doing sunblock, you need to look into, into the, the, the ingredient. If it has oxybenzone, oxybenzone was found to be uh, 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 an EDC that can have severe um, effects on our reproductive health. The good yeah. thing now is there are good alternatives. Um, aluminum, I'm sorry, it's zinc hydroxide, you know, and, and the products are getting better. So number one would be, look at what you're putting on your skin. Um, I'm in the process of starting an online um, um, tutorial where I'm going to teach people how to identify what they need to stay away from and what, the, what are the alternatives. Because it's not about not putting sunblock. You want to put the right sunblock that doesn't have the EDCs. Uh, makeup, soap, shampoo. If we start seeing at how many exposures we get on this, it's very scary. So my goal is in the future, I'm going to do more and more talks like this to really educate people on what are the, the, the EDCs to stay away from. Something very easy I try, I try to remember, if it has BENZ, B-E-N-Z, or FEN, P-H-E-N, if there's those words somewhere in it, it is most likely an EDC. Look for yeah. a product that doesn't have it. Number two, our food. Not only our food because of the excess calorie and causing obesity, but our foods that are sprayed with atrazine and glyphosate completely, this is a no-no. I didn't used to believe in, in um, um, organic food before. When I was a student, I was broke. Every time my, my wife was telling me, let's buy organic food, I'm like, it's too expensive. Now I realize we need to try to eat organic as much as we can, especially there's the dirty dozen fruits and vegetables like apples, strawberries, blueberries, things that you eat out of the skin. Um, now, at this point, I'd rather not eat a fruit that's part of that dirty dozen that is a conventionally grown, meaning that all the pesticides. I'd rather not eat that fruit if I cannot eat it organic, because you really got to find a way to decrease those pesticides. Milk. Did you know that milk, there's a study of milk and boys, uh, because in the United States, they, they made it that um, even when a cow is pregnant, they give it enough hormones that it can still make milk. So imagine the amount of estrogen that is in that milk. And they did a study where they gave young boys drinking regular milk that is also in a plastic jug, so leaching plasticizers and phthalates, and they give young boys to drink that milk. And they showed that within a few hours, their testosterone levels drop. Of course, it would go back up. But what if that boys drink milk two to three times a day every day? What's going to happen to that testosterone level long term? So yeah. it's all those little things we need to start becoming aware of and to really, number one, we need to realize, our young people need to realize that we live in a toxic world. And in a toxic world, not just that it may cause cancer. I think everybody knows that. But when you, take a, when you tell a young person you may have cancer for that, you're like, ah, not me. Cancer doesn't happen to young people. But if I tell that young person it may affect your ability to have children, it may affect your ab ability to have an erection, it may affect your ability to procreate in the, in the future, it hits differently. And we need to let them know, and we need to guide them. You know, you, me, everybody, I talk to all my colleagues. We need to raise the alarm and really come up with easy ways for patients to find better products. Mm -hmm.